In Washington, a showdown on the Senate floor today over the Keystone XL pipeline. The vote to approve the controversial pipe project uh, has big political implications, but the energy implications have diminished since the project was first proposed. The economy has moved on. Oil has moved on. Well, Chief Washington correspondent uh, Peter Cook has more. And Peter, first on the politics side, do supporters have the 60 votes that they need to get this through the Senate? Well, that is the big question still at this point. Betty, I can tell you that Mary Landrieu, the Democrat from Louisiana, really started this uh, fight over the Keystone Pipeline in this lame duck session of Congress. She says she feels comfortable that they're going to get to 60, yet we still don't know publicly who that magic 60th vote is going to be. We can count 59 at this point, but we cannot get to 60. We don't know exactly who that would be. Get them over the top. But still, she and other supporters are feeling confident. They were dealt a blow yesterday when four Democrats were being targeted for support uh, uh, indicated they're going to vote no. Uh, those four Democrats had all expressed support for the pipeline at various stages over the past couple of years, but uh, uh, they've all decided, and that includes Amy Klobuchar, Mark Udall, Chris Coons, and Tim Johnson, uh, that they're not going to shortcut this process, the review process. They would allow uh, the normal process to take place here. And Betty, even if Mary Landrieu can get the magic 60 votes she needs for this project on the Senate floor tonight at 615, you still have the prospect of President Obama standing there and deciding whether or not he's going to sign this into law. And every indication is so far from senators I'm talking to that if it reaches the president's desk, he's going to veto it. So this could be a fight, uh, really, that's going nowhere. Uh, it, it could go nowhere, Peter. And this is primarily why the reason why, right, Peter, that the energy industry has largely moved on from Keystone. Well, Betty, this has been a six-year fight, and to be, to be clear, the energy industry, including uh, top energy associations here in the United States, are actively fighting in favor of the Keystone Pipeline. They think this project should happen, but the reality on the ground is the energy industry has largely moved on. So much has changed in the last six years. First of all, you've got to look at the explosion of U.S. oil production. So much uh, uh, more barrels per day produced in the United States compared to 2008. You also have to look at the price of oil, which, of course, recently has dropped. It's about 75 bucks a barrel. That raises questions about whether this is an economic a project as it was just a few years ago. And then finally, you also got to look at what's happening in the interim in terms of moving this oil to market. You've got rail capacity in Alberta alone will be up to 700,000 barrels a day by 2015. Betty, this oil is moving. It's moving along other pipelines. It's moving by rail. And there's an argument that can be made that maybe Keystone isn't as important as it once was. Certainly, that's not the case to Canada, Betty. And that's a wild card here. This is a critically important project to the Canadians. And it would be a big blow to U.S.-Canadian relations if it didn't happen. I, I agree on that, Peter. Now, any sense, though, that this debate has actually helped Mary Landrieu in her runoff? Well, the sense I get from talking both to lawmakers here and analysts here, as well as folks down in Louisiana, is that it hasn't hurt her chances. But, Betty, this is going to be an uphill fight all along. The polls show her trailing Bill Cassidy in the race uh, for that Louisiana Senate seat, and it's going to be a lot to overcome. Not clear that this vote alone uh, is enough to put Mary Landrieu over the top, but it hasn't hurt her chances. It's probably helped, but still an uphill fight. All right, Peter, thank you so much. Our chief Washington correspondent, Peter Cook, on the Hill.